So in the last two videos in the series, we were able to install a brand new cluster from scratch. Uh, we went ahead and uh, installed Rancher on our brand new cluster, which allows us to essentially manage our cluster. We also set up um, uh, load balancing, we set up ingresses, we mapped a domain name. And believe it or not, that, work, that whole workflow we use for installing Rancher is pretty much what you would use for all your different applications, with the exception being that you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, need to set up a load balancer every single time, or set up you know, um, you know, other stuff every single time. So, however, this our cluster isn't complete yet. For now, we can deploy stateless applications, and they work perfectly fine. So, stateless applications are applications that don't have any um, info, uh, important information in them, because if any of the pods were to go down, or if any of the nodes were to go down permanently, we would actually lose data. So in order to fix that, we will, we can um, install a storage class, right? So in Kubernetes, a storage class essentially um, is a type of storage in your cluster. And what we are trying to do is to uh, install dynamic provisioning. So anytime any of your pods asks for a specific uh, size of uh, hard disk or whatever, you know, there should be something that generates those storage on the fly and hands it over to your pods. So there are in, in Kubernetes, there are so many ways you can you can solve this problem, but um, I'm going to go with something I, I feel is uh, really, really simple. So let's head over to local on that system. We come here and now what we just need is to head over to apps on that system. Keep in mind that the system project is only for like um, cluster management and cluster administration tasks and we just select launch. Now from launch, we have a lot of options, but the option we care about here is something called um, storage OS, right? Yes, storage OS. Um, you have other options really. You could just come here and specify storage. We could just type storage right here. Okay, so these are some of the options you have. If you have an NFS storage, you could use that. Or if you have open EBS, which is also good, but I've noticed that storage OS is actually the simplest to implement. So for this one, you just specify storage OS. It asks you uh, what namespace do you want to put it in. So typically I want that to be in cube system so that it's um, essentially, I don't accidentally delete or manipulate that uh, namespace by accident. And then we just select all the different, conf the default configurations are fine and we are good to go yes we, we could also create a, a password you could use to log into the storage um service so i'm going to quickly do one so now that i've done that i go ahead and click launch very simple so what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and install the storage os operator that helps us manage um, storage but this time it's going to manage storage using the cluster's own um, infrastructure. It has a replication, it has fault tolerance built into it such that if um, data were to get corrupt or, or, or for example, I don't know, if one of your nodes were to go down, right, you know, the information is mirrored to other nodes so that you never have like permanent data loss. Now granted, if someone can knock down more than half of your um, your cluster, they could, you could, you know, it could result in data loss, but I feel like it's a good uh, compromise for you know having very fast storage versus you know you know keeping like a database or something like that. So it's something that you know there are always trade-offs. So you just need to figure out which uh, trade-offs make sense for you. If you have external storage like Blob Storage or Azure Disk or whatever, you could also configure that as well. But yeah, it's to each his own. You know, storage in Kubernetes is a very very deep rabbit hole that I don't want to really go down. So here, as you can see, we've been able to create the storage OS operator. It's currently running. Um, one last thing we need to do is to head over to our cluster. Yes, in the cluster, we need to specify storage class. So as you can see, storage OS has installed itself as a storage class. However, it's not the default storage class, meaning that um, pods need to specify that they want storage OS to store their uh, volumes before storage OS can actually work. So in order to fix that, you just say set as default and voila. Uh, subsequently, if we create a pod that asks for, um, you know, a particular, um, that asks for a, using a PVC, so ask for a particular amount of storage, 
um, essentially the storage uh, or storage OS will kick in and just generate a a volume for that uh, storage and to even prove that everything is working let's go ahead and log into storage OS. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick one of my nodes um so, da, 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 let's let's see if we pick we can pick master it doesn't matter it doesn't matter copy the ip address and i need to say 5705 right that's the port number for storage os and if you wait a little bit you'll see that i'm in so this is the administrative end of storage os and once i'm logged in you can see that there is uh, there's all kinds of management tools and infrastructure here and you have a license you can pay for storage os if you are dealing with anything larger than 500 gig but in my experience 500 gig is pretty much but yeah if you're an enterprise customer you should consider buying the high you know the professional but if you don't want to spend money on storage OS, that's also fine you could use open ebs or any of the other storage containers just like my experience storage OS is like very easy so that's why i just use it uh let's click upgrade you just need to log in with your credentials and you're good to go right so you can enter your license key here or you just create an account it's actually free and they will send you an activation link and once you activate it they will unlock 500 gigs of storage for you so anytime you create volumes those volumes will be here you could uh, make copies of the volumes you could back up the code volumes you could set up all kinds of uh, interesting things uh, that you want and that will be it so right now we have a fully fledged um cluster in fact if i wanted to have like developers or other people come and manage this cluster with me as a cluster admin i just need to come to users and i just need to create those users as well put their username their passwords specify whether they're administrators standard user and then assign them to different clusters and whenever any user is logged into the cluster all they simply need to do is just click this cube config file and they have a cube config file they can use to connect to the cluster and that's about it so it's it's really at this point it's super simple so i hope with uh, this i've been able to show you how to set up uh, storage on your kubernetes cluster and how to you know um how to log into storage os and see essentially your volumes and be able to back up volumes and stuff like that so uh i hope you were able to learn something see you next time